Hey guys, I'm NHG Designs and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys some examples of cosplays where I've used some recycling techniques or reused fabrics. Right now, recycling, using things that you already have at home, using fabrics you already home, it's a little topical right now because a lot of people can't go out and fabric shop or go and buy supplies and people are trying to be a little bit more creative with the supplies they already have. So I figured this would be a really cool video to show you times that I've either thought outside the box and used something non-conventional for a costume piece or something that I already had in my home, I want to show you times where I use fabrics that I already had. So let's get going. The first cosplay I am showing you is my Esmeralda cosplay which I made in 2015. I believe I was in high school at the time. Um, keep in mind a lot of these costumes are from when I was um, in high school or just into college so I didn't have very big budgets so doing methods like this were very important to me. So. First things first, the skirt, the lavender colored skirt, was made using fabric I already had and it was, I believe, from a costume I made for an ex-boyfriend. Um, I forget the character's name, but he wore this blue tunic-y thing, so I used taffeta for some reason. I don't know, I don't know why, but that's what I used. I had a whole bunch left and that's what the skirt's made out of. The hip piece is actually, I believe, made from my aunt's bridesmaids dresses. We had all this extra like beautiful lilac I guess lilac's the right name for it, but this beautiful beautiful purple color taffeta. It has the, it's true taffeta, it has the um, almost wood grain look in it. Very very nice taffeta and we only had like a small chunk but my mom kept it because I believe it was what her bridesmaid dress was made out of because my family was very into making all their own gowns for weddings and such. So that's what that's made out of. I believe the bias tape was also stuff my mom already had, and even the little coins were made out of scrapbooking basketballs that I painted gold. And I believe even the shirt. Even the goat is made 100% with things I already had. Pipe cleaners are in the legs. Fabric is all stuff from another cosplay, and the gray is all interfacing. So just ways that that costume kind of came together. I think I only bought the pink for the headband, the wig and the stuff to make the corset. So not too bad. Even the corset itself was made using, I think we used zip ties instead of plastic boning because I just happened to have it. And for me, the cinching action wasn't exactly what was important here. It was more so for aesthetic and keeping it nicely in place. But everything else I kind of had, this costume did not cost me a lot to make. Next up is Twin Rova. And this is where some of the thinking outside of the box came in. So first things first, when most people look at this costume, the first thing they see is all of this and the wands I have in my hands. Um, part of the reason I thought of doing this cosplay to begin with was because my mom had a bag full of tools, you know, all sorts of different colors, but mostly reds, oranges, whites, and blues. Perfect. So for the headpiece, we took floral foam and bobby pins that we already had and shoved all the tool in the middle all around and then we put all the organza around it in between which the organza was purchased but it complemented the tool really well and really gave it that really cool fiery look. The headpiece and the two pieces here and belt piece are also made using that floral foam which I carved into and painted afterwards. Um, yeah so that was actually a really fun part to come up with and again those tools are what inspired me to make it but it's also because I had this black leatherly fabric. I have no idea why my mom had this stuff, but she used it for some project at some point in the 70s. I believe it's the 70s. I'm actually not sure, but she didn't have very much of it, but she had just enough for me to make the corset here as well as the neck piece and I believe it's on the pants. There's little pieces in the sleeves. I didn't have to buy any of that. I just, and even the interfacing inside that is keeping the structure, didn't have to purchase that at all. Even the gold on it, I did not have to purchase. It was all stuff I had. It was because I realized I had this cool textured faux leather combined with all this tool that made me think, I want to do a Twin Rova cosplay. So sometimes it's the materials you have that inspire the project that you're going to do, which is a great thing to think about when we're all in quarantine right now. So talking about our projects in order, the next one I'm going to talk about is probably the most popular one on my YouTube channel. And that would be my Lissa cosplay. My Lissa cosplay was actually made of mostly purchased items, 
but it's the hoop skirt in here in particular that is the interesting part. The hoop skirt on Lissa happens to be something that is seen outside the garment. It's clearly open on the sides and you see what looks like a steel hoop. How does she sit in that thing? I don't know. But all I knew when I wanted to make Lissa was that I don't have the tools, abilities, or anything available to me to learn how to do a welded hoop skirt. So with a little bit of out of the box thinking and a little bit of a brainstorming session with my mother, we thought of doing it with steel strapping from a lumber yard because I had access to that and that was metal and metal hoops. But then I realized that it was a little on the sharp side, a little rusted and combined with a ribbon to hold up the structure, it wouldn't look very good. And it might be a little dangerous because all these edges are showing and it might cut through fabric. So that's when we thought of putting metallic duct tape on it. And this actually worked. Not only did it keep the rusted edges of the steel strapping it from showing and potentially getting onto the costume, it kept the edges nice and secure inside the duct tape and it made it so that the horizontal hoops and the vertical support matched in color because it's all covered in the same exact duct tape. And it was super, super strong. I could jump in this thing, I could flail around. It wasn't going anywhere because it was all made with duct tape taped to itself. The swing was not ripping unless you take a knife or some scissors to it. Very strong scissors because this thing was pretty strong. Even to this day, it still holds up super well. So that's another example of out of the box thinking when I didn't have access to the actual technique to build this kind of structure for a costume. The next cosplay I'm sharing is my Impa cosplay from Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. This one doesn't have any examples actually of recycled bits for cosplay. But I wanted to share this one because it has an example of out of the box thinking. And for some people, this might be an object where it is something they have available to them. Something I was struggling with finding for this cosplay was figuring out how to do this big old hoop right on her abdomen. Now the problem with that is I could use some foam clay, I could use something like that, except it's an area where you're moving a lot. You sit down, it might get scrunched up. You're standing up, your suit, like it's an awkward area. And if it's something you make out of clay or something, very easy spot to break because it would sit against your lap. So I was in a bit of a pickle. And then one day I was at a hardware store with my mother and there was an oven element piece, a perfect silver hoop. Exactly what I needed. And I think it was only like $5. I look at it. Well, I hold it up to my stomach. This is perfect. So that's a perfect example of out of the box thinking. You never know what could potentially help you. And it worked out really nicely. It looked really cool. No one even questioned, no one can tell it was an oven element piece. No one at all. When I told people, they were like, oh my God, that's hilarious. But no one really batted an eyelash at it. No one thought I looked like I was a walking oven. It wasn't a problem. The next example is another Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword cosplay. So let's lump these two together. This one is actually something people have noticed compared to Impa, but when I was planning how to do the belts, I was trying to think how would I do these beautiful gold circular pieces. And then I looked at the bottom of a soup can. All of the circular pieces are pieces from soup cans. I have a, my mom has a very special kind of um, can opener that it keeps the edge nice and smooth and this is because of course she raised kids so she wanted to make sure she had this kind of can opener so she used that on all the soup we had and you know we had a lot of soup in the time i was making this costume just so i could get all of these pieces to go around the belt but it worked out so well i spray painted them all gold and they looked really cool they already had the raised textures and we made sure to use ones that were all the same kind of raised texture it looked super neat and Anytime people notice that they are made of soup cans, I got the best reactions. So to the young girl who actually has the cosplay now, because I have sold it, take a look at the belt this time. You'll suddenly notice that the belt that you're using for your Zelda cosplay is made of soup can lids. Next cosplay I'm talking about is my Merida cosplay. Good old Scottish lassie. Um, so this one I actually started making because I found the tartan fabric in my mom's storage. Shocker! 
but I'm from a very Celtic area, so we actually have quite a collection of really nice tartan fabrics. And when I found this one, right away my mind went to Merida, one of my favorite Disney slash Pixar characters. And I realized it looked extremely similar to the Dumbro plaid, their family tartan in the film and in real life. So I took, a, I went, did some searching and some research on it and I found out there were only a few little differences, enough differences that I would also not offend anyone by using the tartan. So I decided I'm gonna use this tartan. So everything in the belt was made with things I already had. The tartan, the vinyl I used for the belt itself, I think my parents used it for a boat lining and I was like, oh, I'm taking some of that, it's nice. And again, I have some of that floral foam for the belt buckle. The other thing on this cosplay that is recycled is I believe the petticoat I actually wore with it was from my aunt's wedding dress. <laughs> I reuse petticoats often, as much as I can because I don't have as big as a budget as some people do in cosplay. I can't afford to make a different petticoat per costume. So if the silhouette's proper, I will reuse it if I can because it's practical, a little bit more environmentally friendly and it's nicer for my storage to just, oh, we're putting on this costume. Let's pull out the petticoat for that one instead of having a different petticoat for every single dress. So finally, I'm talking about my most recent cosplay, which is Princess Tomoyo from Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicles. This one actually had a number of recycled things in it, which I'm really proud about. So first and foremost is an underlayer that you can't see. It's shown a little bit at the collar, but there's basically an under kimono and that was actually made of old sheets, white sheets. Again, I'm a student, or I was at this point especially, and my budget was plummeting at this point in the semester when I was making this costume. So budget wasn't really, wasn't really there. I had already spent a lot on the silk for the purple. So, Everything else I kind of had to squirm by as best I could. So undergarments are all made of white sheets. <laughs> the white kimono layer that you see with the big sleeve, that was actually made with leftovers from my Princess Zelda cosplay from a few years beforehand. All the foam clay was already stuff I already had and everything on my head was made with foam that I just had in my mom's craft room. And this is another example where I reused a petticoat. This petticoat in question I also used on my Snow White cosplay from 2016 and it came out of a wedding dress I found at the secondhand store. They just gave me this dress because they wanted to see if I could use any pieces of it. Some of the fabric was literally falling apart, like you would touch it, it would just... But the petticoat was okay. So what I did was I took it out of the dress, got ri unfortunately I had to throw out the rest of it, but it was disintegrating in my hands literally every time I touched it. I put in, I think, one or two other layers into it, and then I redid the waistband, and I had a really a good sized little petticoat just to add a little oomph. You can't really see it too much in here, but that's because it's not supposed to look like a big skirt on Tomoyo. So it was absolutely perfect. I've actually used it with Merida since because my aunt took her petticoat for her wedding dress back, so I use this one for Merida as well since the silhouette's very similar. Moral of the story is you can be very creative with cosplay creation. You do not have to break the bank. If you happen to have a crafty parent, grandparent, aunt or uncle, anyone like that where you can mooch off of them, borrow some supplies, a lot of times they're happy to help you out because in these kinds of hobbies or fields, you end up accumulating a lot of stuff. So a lot of times they're very happy to help spread the wealth with you. So not everyone's as lucky, but usually there's other things you can do. Creative ways to work around a lack of a budget or lack of being able to get supplies like we're kind of in the situation right now. So remember to like, subscribe and all that good stuff. And always keep an open mind for creating costumes because you never know what will work. It doesn't have to be the technically accurate way of doing it sometimes if you can save some money. Even in competitions, this could work. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.